Kia ora, my name is Te Aotearangi Sayers and I am a technical advisor in the marine space and have been focused on restoration ecology for the last probably about 10 years. So this is the work around what I've been doing in the marine spatial planning and utilising the Resource Management Act and what that kind of looks like. What we've achieved in the recent Mōtiti Rohe Moana decision. So this is a beautiful reef system that is part of our intrinsic connection to the ocean. This is a representation of Titini o Tarangaroa, our Taonga species and our Taonga Mau Mau are present here. But we're all tied to the ocean as people of the ocean and as an ocean community we have an array of interconnections with the ocean from our community's well-being and, and our community relationship through the recreational activities that we have but also our commercial activities that provide security to our coastal communities and our cultural identities that are that are fitted around this marine space but then there's a vast majority of people that that really enjoy the knowing of the environment and to see the environment flourish and to see it provide for all of us now collectively the community all seeks uh, an opportunity to have a vibrant environment that is supporting their well-being. Except our environment is actually under significant pressure. It's under the pressures from from our di from the discharges that are emptied into the ocean, as well as from our waste that we that like our plastic waste that is um, killing fishes and birds and and various other types of marine and sea life and the climate change threat that is coming around the corner as well as future threats of inappropriate activities. So the basis of this is, is essentially destabilizing the ecosystem and that ecosystem is now starting to move from a resilient ecosystem with a myriad of interconnected ties of trophic layers to a very barren ecosystem of very low order primary producers and we're losing that diversity in this process. And that diversity is reflected in, in the way in which we have lost the availability of many of New Zealand species. In particular, we have lost the hapoku from the, from the inshore area. And a large proportion of that is due to the inappropriate activities of trawling that, that has occurred within, within the inshore area. Now hapoku are actually found in the areas that that aren't exposed to these intensive activities. And so this was very concerned in terms of how do we find a solution to this problem. So we looked at the Resource Management Act because it's actually the intersecting act of, of many other acts and it actually provides a, a coupling to an, an information basis that regional um, authorities and regional contexts inform other statutes in the in New Zealand uh, ecosystem or legislative ecosystem. And in such, we started with the regional policy statement where we established the necessity to have a management regime that would enable and facilitate the protection and preservation of natural character and biodiversity, habitat and cultural values associated with the Mōtiti Rohe Moana, which the Council refers to as the Mōtiti Natural Environment Area. After that, we went into the proposition to the Coastal Environment Plan, which then enabled the Coastal Environment Plan to provide the protections of those qualities. So here, our wahi tapu are in pink, and our areas of wahi taonga are in yellow. The court agreed the areas of significance were of such high values that there needed to be a prohibition order on the destruction of flora and fauna. Uh, however, we were asking for the restriction on other activities outside of that, such as the intense industrial fishing activities and shifting those to a more lower intensity. The court declined that and only confirmed that the environment around those reefs were of, of known significance and the rest would be directed to a, to a future process. What we do know is that the environment is a credibly resilient environment and it will return to uh, an abundance and a vibrancy very quickly. However, 
with the Resource Management Act, if we think of fish in this way, this will not work for the Resource Management Act. This is clearly the Fisheries Act that is, that is governing this activity. However, if we think of the, the rock and the habitat and the, and the intrinsic values that are associated with that, and the fact that the marine life requires that these places to have resilience, then we'll find ourselves in a much better place. Reality though is that if we don't start to do something now, we will find it in a very short amount of time a barren and desolate marine environment. And fundamentally, if one tugs on a single thing in nature, he finds it attached to the rest of the world. Namahiki